What up, Ho Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again, here with my husband. Hello, husband. We're dressed for two completely different weathers. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Are you, are you sick or something? No. Why are you so goddamn hot? Thank you. You're so sweet. You're so funny. You can let that story die. It was a good one, though. First and foremost, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized eons ago. Yeah, at the a... dawn of time. Chavez used to work in pest control. Sure did. And so my husband is out there looking all fine, doing yeah. his pest control thing Thank with you. his little power sprayer, you know? Yeah. Zapping all the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my right? wife thinks that I do all day. That's how she imagines my job. <laughs> and I is that a bug? <laughs> Pull the fucking truck over. That's a fucking bug. Hold on. Get the fucking sprayer. <laughs> The bug eradicator. Please continue. Uh, so anyway, my husband's doing his thing <laughs> in somebody's front yard. And his lady comes jogging by. by and then she comes jogging back. And then yeah. she starts talking to my husband about what he's doing. And I don't remember the entire conversation. Right. But I do remember that at one point she goes, <laughs> you're so funny. Yeah. Touches my, and then swipes. <laughs> you're so funny. And it, it's one of those moments that like, the rest of the details will get muddled as time goes on. Right. But you're never going to forget just how fucking awkward. Just such a weird moment. And then my husband was like, don't touch me, bitch. No, he didn't. I didn't. That. I was at he work. I was he like, please not. actually call the number so I can make money. <laughs> <laughs> how funny am I really? Please. Right. Am I funny enough to get you yeah. to sign a contract? That's what I'm saying. I need to be contract funny. So I'm, I'm really hoping you mean those words, lady. <laughs> And of course, my husband comes home and tells me this, and I'm supremely unamused at the time. But now I just think it's really oh, funny. It was a great story. Yeah, you were a pretty good sport about it even <laughs> then, too. But that has nothing to do with what we are here for today. Just put it up as a short. That was so <laughs> off topic. <laughs> a couple of you guys have recommended the Blue Jay channel after Chavez and I have been lamenting the absence of Sam Onella. And even after his return, we've realized he's not coming back so soon. So we will fill the void with some Blue Jay. Absolutely. Absolutely. The title of this video is Historic Duels That Put the Wild West to Shame. I love Tombstone, so I'm down for this. So I'm very excited. I yeah. love duels. Psh, wait. Psh, that's me slapping you with my glove. Ah! <laughs> Fight back. <laughs> oh, not your shirt. Not your t-shirt. I'm excited to see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started. Petty disputes are like taxes. They hit you when you least expect it and usually lead to some sort of criminal threat. I taxes? will eat your yep. firstborn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Your religion is wrong. Oh, all right. <laughs> this whole thing is unhinged. Okay. Unlike today, where death threats can be made from the safety of your couch. No, no, read that. Read that. No, read that. Why didn't the Death Eaters just run around with mandrakes while wearing earmuffs if their screams kill anyone that hears them? So much more effective. Stupid books. Yeah. Literally die. <laughs> the people of the past didn't have the luxury of the internet to keep their murderous desires at bay. Instead, <laughs> they resorted to a good old-fashioned duel to settle their differences. This glorious practice sent a strong message that no matter how big or Down small, right any problem can be solved honorably with a little elbow grease and murder. But while dueling is no longer available today, don't you worry, champ. We have our alternatives. Hey, so actually, I, I said I didn't want any pickles. Ratio. What's that? Mean? <laughs> L. But for some, oh. a traditional duel can only bring so much excitement. You know how getting stabbed and shot at gets dull after a while. So today, we're going to explore the stories of those who participated in some of the wackier duels in history. I'm ready. Okay. I like the thing he took these shots himself. It's well known that the French's two greatest contributions to the world are drinking wine with your pinky out and cartoony murder stories, such as the hot-headed man who headed the headhunt after beheading the head of state while heedlessly spearheading his headless demise. Ha. But reigns Fantastic. entire aside, the French are legendary for their use of duels to settle their disagreements. Everything from political differences to whose mustache best represents a kick-ass roller coaster. So when Monsieur de Grandpre and Monsieur de Pique found out they had both been seeing the same woman, a duel was short to follow. 
The year is 1808, and the renowned Maybe. dancer at the Paris Opera, Mademoiselle Tervit, was dating Grompre, but began to see Le Pic on the side for a little Ooh. extra baguette. Both men laid claim to the woman, <laughs> because it's the 1800s and before Beyonce, you could still do that kind of thing, agreeing to a duel to win her heart. But given the grand nature of the prize, so too must the duel itself be elevated. Right. Literally. Oh, if it is the woman On a tight you rope? want, Monsieur de Pique, a duel you must have. A roof. May the third, the crack of dawn, we duel. You're on, Monsieur. Oh, putain, I have a balloon race that day. We will make it work. It was decided Shut that the only way to settle up. the dispute was with a duel in gas balloons. Shut up. Why must the men fight to the death thousands of feet above Paris? No clue. Maybe they thought the Fire Nation had the right idea. But if anything, ah. we can thank the French for pioneering the steampunk Sweet. genre. The idea was to take a month to build identical gas balloons, ascend into the air, and take turns firing at each other's balloons with a blunderbuss, a predecessor to the modern shotgun. On May the what? 3rd, 1808, as crowds gathered for what they thought was a balloon race, both men ascended in their balloons with their seconds who were to act as co-pilots. Traditionally, the role of a second is to mediate the duel, as well as attempt to defuse the situation entirely to avoid bloodshed. That makes me think of Hamilton. Because of uh, the fact that uh, Thomas Jefferson got in the hot air balloon when he was debating no, the role of his role because of the Ten Dual Commandments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, grab a friend, that's your second, your lieutenant, when there's reckoning, to right. be reckoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I think of Hamilton. <laughs> case, on top of their usual, Dwells attempt to defuse the situation entirely to avoid bloodshed. In this case, on top of their usual duties, the seconds were literally prepared to die if their I guy was lost. Say, that or maybe they misinterpreted the, the term wingman. Say what you will about the French, but they always got their homies back. Wow. Pray, look around. It's so peaceful up here. Kinda makes your whole love triangle problem seem kinda small, huh? Yeah. You know what? You're right. Hey! What? I think I want to go down! You dare call me a clown? No, I said I want to go down! <laughs> no, you're going down! <laughs> fuck! Oh, fuck! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! My own! Marie! Marie, are you okay? Well, God at least damn. my own air is restored. <laughs> <laughs> about half a mile up, a signal was given and the duel commenced. Le Pic wow. fired first and miraculously missed the giant balloon. Grompre followed with his shot, which hit its mark, sending Le Pic and the second plummeting Damn. to the ground, who were then, quote, dashed to pieces on a housetop. That part wasn't a joke. Oh my lord. Th that's the quote. A fitting end, because anyone with aim that bad is bound to be a nuisance at urinals and thus deserves to die. <laughs> it should be noted right. that the authenticity of the story is a little questionable. The it's earliest course, record of the but... story that I could <laughs> find was in a British newspaper a few months after the fact. It's also mentioned in a book by a proclaimed authority on duels. I even went as far as to ask a duelist historian about it, who said while he doesn't necessarily doubt it to be true, he has no reason to be certain it isn't apocryphal. So this story gets filed under, it may not have happened, but the world's more fun believing it did. See so anyway, the when there's... Now why does Seahawks gotta catch a stray? Why does Seahawks gotta catch a stray? So this story gets filed oh under. Oh my god. That's wrong. JFK wore a level three helmet. Damn. The Incas fight oh, off the con conquistadors. That's fucked up. I love this. That's good stuff, dude. That's so wrong. Yeah. So anyway, whether or not Grumpre actually ended up with Tirvit is unknown, but I like to imagine he realized that if he should love anyone, is the one willing to put his life on the line right. so that his bro can get laid. So what could possibly follow up Balloon Tower Defense France Edition? <laughs> well, that's right, the French again. Back during the French Restoration, there existed a lot of tension between the former soldiers of Napoleon's army and the bright and shiny Royal Guard. And considering the French tend to be quite honest and direct with their thoughts, quarrels are rather expected. Which shouldn't be too surprising. It's such a problem that they literally developed a career dedicated to silence. One such <laughs> quarrel occurred when Colonel Babier Dufay trod on the toes of the young Captain Raoul de Vere of the Royal Guard and insulted his cockade. <laughs> Okay. Get your what? mind out of the gutter, it's a hat ribbon. But apparently oh, okay. in 19th century France, mocking a glorified knot was akin to spitting on an orphan, because Raoul was so wow. insulted that only blood could remedy such a dishonor. He challenged Dufay to a duel, offering up the rapier, sword, or pistol as the weapon of choice. 
whichever Dufay preferred. This surprised the colonel, who was all like, oh shit, so you've mastered all these? To which Raoul responded, uh, no, I'm 18. Seeing as how Dufay wasn't a fan of Fortnite, he wasn't all that interested in murdering children that day. But as he began to walk away, Raoul placed his hand on the colonel's cheek, which sounds really touching at first until he realized that's just fancy olden talk for giving him the old airplane treatment. And oh, thus, a okay. duel with rapiers commenced. They faced off in the street, where the more experienced Dufay proceeded to easily disarm Raoul four times. <laughs> okay, stop. No, down. Put it down, boy. This is pathetic. I'm not an assassin. You have not bested me yet, good sir. Uh, uh, okay, fine. You held in on a fight to the death? You insulted my cookie! Jesus Christ. Okay, uh... Let's <laughs> make things interesting. Game. Apparently, four consecutive disarms wasn't enough to solidify a victor, so DeFay proposed that they should, and I'm not making this up, tie their left arms together, enter the back of a coach, He's and stab beat. each other to death with daggers. <gasps> oh! Because you know what they say, oh. if you can't win with a sword four times, try fast and furious with knives. I was thinking, punch each other, and that sounded fun. Then he put knives and I got afraid. Cause even if you're a bad fighter, you can fucking stab. You don't need This is wild. <laughs> They're unhinged. <laughs> Bro, and it's his idea. And I like how he went from, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna disarm you. I'm gonna embarrass you. I'm gonna teach you a little lesson too. We both gonna die today, bitch. He said, you know what I would do if I was serious? I'd tie our hands together, give us both knives, and stab you to death in the back of that carriage. And the kid went, bet. This was thought to be the perfect solution, as it would ensure no one could escape. So the, <laughs> the second took over for the carriage driver and began driving their pre-routed two laps around the plastic carousel. And if there's anyone to feel most sorry for, it's them. Hunger! Oh, Wait till you see my spin move. Wait till you see my spin move. I made this move myself. Not the cocaine. He's crying. He's crying. <laughs> So did Raul finally catch his break, redeeming oh. his honor solely by the insult to his cockade and numerous disarmaments? No. No. <laughs> no, the lad was very dead. Dufay also appeared to be dead at first, having been stabbed four times in the chest, but he wow. ultimately recovered from his wounds. Some accounts <laughs> claim that he later died from his injuries, but the majority okay. of the sources I consulted state otherwise. Plus, as we all know, it takes 37 stabs in the chest to kill a man. So if we learned any valuable lessons from it's this encounter, reference. it's uh... <laughs> No, nah, it's that that old man was with it the whole time. He just didn't want this kid to be like, bro, I'm unhinged. Like, you you are fucking with the wrong one, bro. Like, yo, hat is stupid. I do not care. I will murder you. Do not make me. Right. That's crazy. Imagine being that kid's mom and hearing that he had four chances yeah. to not be fucking dead. Imagine that you're his mom and you realize he should have played the lotto because picking the one guy crazy to do that is also insane. There's only got to be like six people oh in the world God. crazy enough to do that at any point in time. You know what I'm saying? The story insane. that takes place on the other side of the English <sighs> Channel. On a cold winter's evening in 1765, the two cousins, neighbors, and friends, Lord William Byron and William Shawworth, oh, were enjoying we their weekly him. dinner Byron. at the Star yeah. Garter Tavern in London. It started off pleasant enough, just two blokes enjoying a chinwag, having a laugh, you know, British things. But as the wine <laughs> continued to run, so too did their mouths. I noticed you didn't say nothing about his accent. Hey man, your accent is fucking pathetic. You know what I'm saying? I've met me a Scottish Brit before, and he would laugh at you. Having a laugh. <laughs> Bro, you guys cannot do accents. A conversation began on the proper way to hang birds after they were shot, which okay. soon transitioned into whose estate oh, held those game birds. Yeah, but little did they this. know, they what? were both right yeah. unders at heart. And what began as some harmless boasting rapidly escalated as neither side would back down. You see, Byron, at my estate, we roll the wings up like crescent rolls and hang the bird from the claws. <laughs> from the <laughs> well, claws. it only makes sense coming from an estate like yours. What do you mean by Talk that? Shit. Oh, only just that you obviously lack proper experience with an estate so devoid of game birds. Oh! <laughs> this coming from the bloke with only 20 pheasants on his estate. 29? And please, you don't have more than a handful of quail in your brush. Good sir, my estate is brimming with quail, along with dozens upon dozens of red-legged partridges. You have as many partridges <laughs> as you have admirers, you wazzock. Meanwhile, I've got 18 <laughs> capercaillie roaming my backyard. I've got 17 ostriches. Yes, 17 ostriches that run circles around your pathetic capercaillie. 
14 pterodactyls. My estate has 14 pterodactyls flying leagues above your glorified giraffe chickens. All right, how did everything turn out tonight? Oh, wonderful. Say, could you show us to a room? The argument escalated to the point wow. where they drew their swords and asked the waiter to show them to an empty room. The waiter returned after hearing a lot of commotion to find Shawworth gravely injured with Byron's sword driven firmly through his gut, proving once and for all that Lord William Byron had the most birds. <laughs> or something like that. Shawworth lived for a full day before before he died, during which he claimed that he only regretted that the room that they dueled in was so dimly lit and thus caused his defeat. Basically the equivalent of saying, I lost because he had a good gaming chair. After ah. his cousin's death, William Byron was put on trial for murder before the House of Lords, during what? which they asked him, are you guilty of the <laughs> felony of murder? To which he responded, nah no. fam, no, and so they found him guilty of manslaughter instead. Right. While normally you expect people to regret their stupid decisions, Byron proudly mounted the sword that slew his friends in his bedchamber, and later would earn the nickname, the Wicked Lord. He ultimately got off with just a small fine, showing that as long as the honor of bird lovers is at stake, and you happen to be a lord, you absolutely can put a price on human life. Oh, hey Life Lesson Leopard, what wisdom do you have for us today? <laughs> Dwell not on the grievances past, for that which festers blooms with thorns, and those whose minds dwell to the last shall find their doom, this leopard warns. The fuck okay. wrong with okay. you, man? What, you want money? You want to keep those wings? Jesus, okay, here. I could have taken him. What was that? Da, 10 out of 10 stars. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Alright! That was a great ending. Yeah. I had a good time with that. They used to just, uh, they yeah. used to just do shit back in the day, bro. I like a good story where people were like, man, I wish you go back to the time where men were men. You would never tie your hand on, to on. a nut. Yeah, go for it. Left hand to left hand. You wouldn't do this for a fist mono fight. Mono e mono, bitch. Yeah, wrap it up. You wouldn't do this for a fist fight. Imagine you do this, right? You tie your hands up with your wife's t-shirt. How about you just use my hand to tie it up, man? Boom. I'm so we're so tied so together. Sure. Hand me that knife. You take that other knife. We have two knives on my desk. Don't ask questions. They're sheathed. Don't worry about it. They're sheathed knives. And then you go, what? One, two, three. <laughs> Like, that's crazy! There's no getting away! That's insane! And you know the one countdown is cheating. You know they're cheating. They're going on two and a half. On the count of three. One, two. Ah! <laughs> they're going on The fuck, man? I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as we did. <laughs> Don't forget to leave your react requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, hope biscuits. It's skittin' lit.